Hello guys, welcome to another video of Tux Riders. In this video, we want to see how we can build Paraview plugins and load them inside the program and use them. Let's go for it. So in the previous video, I showed you how to build Paraview from the source code and I told you that this is actually an important step. In this regard, we need the build files of the Paraview that uh, now we store them inside this directory. And this is the source files that uh, we grab via a git clone uh, command. So in this video, uh, as I said, I'm going to show you how to uh, compile a Paraview plugin from the source code in order to load them inside a Paraview. And just to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, you know, uh, I need to go to the bean directory of Paraview. So I load a, a, open a terminal here. So this is the version of the Paraview that we built in a previous video, version 12 research candidate one. And then uh, here we have some uh, plugins. So, there are a bunch of plugins that you now there are these things that are here by default are uh, compiled and built via uh, the build process that we uh, followed in uh, you know for building Paraview. We could have also uh, disabled these um, uh, plugins during the build process, but it's totally fine. So in this um, you know in the second part actually of this um, instructional uh, video, I want to show you how you can uh, build a random uh, plugin that we found on the internet. you know I will use a one that is from the University of Stuttgart and then uh, you know uh, you see that how simple it is. So let's go for the process. Uh, the, the plugin that I'm going to install to build and link with, uh, you know, Paraview is, is this one. As you can see, it's uh, actually from a group, research group from the University of Stuttgart for two-phase uh, flow. And it has a couple of features. Uh, it uses, you know, an, an interface tracking as well as some, uh, you know, cool stuff that you can use, for example, to extract the curvature of the surface and geometry preprocessing and this kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, it's indeed... Uh, a header only library, but it has also uh, Paraview plugins. And in this video, I want to, you know, install and compile this basic uh, plugin that has some certain features and then just load them uh, inside uh, Paraview. So, uh, you know, that's a very um, like small code at the same time. It's not very recent, as you can see, it's more or less for four years ago, but the source code has been updated recently. So it should be fine, I guess, you know, there shouldn't be any specific problem here. We just need to grab the, the code. We clone the library and sorry, the repository. And then we go through the standard build process. As you can see, it's with CMake, but uh, for sure it has some certain parameters. Uh, and in order to know them, you know, in a in the videos that we actually had in the set up your system, set up your environment series, I showed you that you can use, uh, you know, the, the command CC make. And in order to follow this video, make sure that you have CC make also installed in your system, which is a kind of interface for CMake in order to see uh, the parameters and the configuration uh, flags that we can set for any kind of software that we want to make with CMake. So now I grab uh, the files and then I clone it to the directory that I had for Paraview just to be side by side to the version of Paraview that we built. And similar to the previous video, I deactivate my Conda environment just to make sure that there is no uh, interference between uh, the system libraries that are installed in that are installed inside the base Conda environment and a system. So now I can clone the directory, the whole directory, it goes to TPF. And now I can go to TPF, you know, this is the, the all the files and stuff. But as I said, you know, I want to uh, see uh, what kind of um, configuration these uh, 
software has when I want to compile it with CMake. So now I, you know, as usual, I just, it's just a convenient. I make a directory in build and then I go inside the build directory and then inside build, I can call CMake from the directory that is uh, the parent, which I'm referring now to this one because now I'm inside build. So I run it and then, you know, this is, uh, it says that it is done, but if we start to build it, you know, if we start to compile, I think we will have some problems. Let's just start a make and you can see that there is actually nothing here to be made because uh, uh, we haven't configured it properly. So in order to see what we can do here, that's usually, we're, as I said, a good practice to run it with CC make. So I run cc make here with the parent directory and then it says an empty cache is here and I need to configure it. So I press C once and then it starts to say that uh, the build type and what I need to do is TPF Paraview plugins to on. You know, this is something that we could uh, we could have done also from the command line with the D switch D TPF Paraview plugins on. So now I turn it on and then I reconfigure it again by pressing C as you can see here. So I press C again and now it says uh, there is a problem actually. Configuration has failed with the follow with the if with the above uh, output. And it says that these files are needed. So now assume that we didn't have like Paraview built. So we just installed that from the binaries. And now with that method, we couldn't have these two files that are actually inside the Paraview build that we produced in a previous video. So these are the files that the error is, is pointing to. So I have this, uh, files here, but let's see how we can point to those files. So I press E as is mentioned here, I press E and now it goes back to the, um, you know, CCMX screen again, and we need to configure it to point to, uh, you know, the directories that is here. It says that Paraview directory not found. So we specify this and then we are ready to go. Before I modify it, you know, let me point out here to some important things and as can be seen here, you know, this, uh, this plugin needs a couple of uh, requirements that I'm not sure if they were mentioned here somehow or not, but uh, now we can see them through this CC make uh, screen that it depends on boost for example, and also Seagal and some other mass libraries like MPFR and GMP. And as you can see, they are already installed on my system. And if you don't have these things installed, you need to make sure that you, uh, you install them first. For example, for Boost and Seagal, depending on the uh, system and the distribution that you have, you can say, for example, I want to say install Seagal on Ubuntu and then, uh, you know, usually you can find it very fast and easy in a first or second link. In this case, it is libsigal dev that you need to install. And then in order to install boost, it's the same procedure. So, you know, these are really like the steps uh, that we have already discussed, but in this case, uh, Depending on a plugin that you want to build, there might be uh, some prerequisites or uh, dependencies that you need to install. In this case, you can see the Deep Boost is also uh, very, very easy to install. And it's the uh, same for the rest. And uh, just by luck, I have also Eigen3 installed on my system via, you know, some uh, finite element installation things. But yeah, um, this is Eigen3 is also not difficult to install. The same procedure, you search for it and then you find how to install it. But yeah, so um, that's, uh, that's the thing. And then there are other options here. Uh, the build type uh, is very important and uh, let's first uh, get uh, like set this uh, parameter as you can see that it is uh, like something that we can change and I need to point it to this directory. So I copy the path here and then paste it here. Press enter and now we are ready to configure it again with by pressing C. 
and see what happens. So I press C again. Now you see that it actually finds uh, everything and now we are ready to build because it says that everything is configured and uh, the plugin TPF flow and also TPF deformation, TPF basic, they are all ready to be uh, compiled. So that's really like the process. Now the build files are also written here. I used, I didn't specify any generator. So by default, it goes to GNU make. And uh, I just want to do also some other modifications. Let's see here if we have more. I, as you can see, I scrolled down and then uh, there are other options that are appeared here for that are specific for the for the plugin that I'm going to build. You can see you can check, you know, the parallelization and uh, so many other options here. So yeah. And, you know, I can also disable some of the features. So for example, I'm imagine that I want to just build the TPF basic. So I can easily turn these things off. I press enter here and I make them off just to save some uh, time. And now I press C again. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's now uh, quite ready. Uh, but there is another thing here that I just saw that uh, we need to install also Qt that is also installed on my system already. So if you have built Paraview on your system, that's one of the um, uh, actually uh, requirements and dependencies. So these are already installed. So now we are ready to go. The configuration is over and I just need to quit by pressing Q as the master aid as uh, denoted here. And now I'm ready to compile the program with make. And uh, I can also specify like I want to compile it with four cores just to make it faster. Let's see if it works or not. So I don't know, maybe uh, let's double check uh, this. Maybe we've forgotten to do something. Let's see. Now after doing, after now, uh, you know, enabling everything, I press C to do the configuration. And now I quit this. Yeah, I forgot to generate the build system actually, you know. Now I need to press G that generates uh, the build files. And now I have a make file here. Yeah, that's the, the step that I missed actually. So I say with four um, apparel uh, notes, apparel CPU cores start to build and the build process starts. Let's see if it compiles successfully. And after it compiles, you know, the source codes, we should have a library file, like a shared library file dot so file that we can load inside the Paraview program. Um, so we need to wait a bit here and then we continue after it's finished. Okay, cool. Now, as you see, uh, we didn't face any error uh, to fix. And now we have a shared library, let's say, a file that we can load inside the Paraview. But the Paraview that we built actually from the source codes, because this library is now linked and compiled against that version and that specific binary. So uh, let's just check if we have it here. Leap and then TPF basic and TPF basic is dot so is the file that we need to load inside Paraview. So I go inside. Uh, oh, sorry, not here. Paraview build. I go to the bin directory and uh, I open a new terminal there. I load the Paraview version 12 release candidate one. And now I should be able to load that plugin. So tools, manage plugins and load new. So I go to TPF uh, build leap TPF basic and TPF basic dot uh, SO. Let's see. Yeah, it didn't have any problem and I select it. Now it is loaded. If not, you know, from for later, uh, because I haven't selected auto load, you need to come here and load it again. 
So I close it and now the plugin is loaded inside my system. As you can see, some new icons appeared there and uh, it has uh, some sources, just a test data that to, to see if uh, the plugin actually works. And yeah, it's very cool now. You can see that this, uh, these things are actually generated with the plugin. And now we should have also some filters here. Uh, for example, uh, we can compute the, the VOF volume of Floyd or the interface curvature and all this stuff. So let me just uh, compute the interface curvature. As you can see, I have something here and I can create a clip on it. I press apply and now here I should be able to, uh, for example, plot the volume of Floyd. Very nice and also the curvature, which is, uh, yeah, it's not, I would say not computed very correctly because yeah, but uh, that was just a test uh, plugin that we wanted to see how to compile. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's, that's the way as uh, you saw, uh, that was not a very difficult process. We just needed to build Paraview first and then build the plugin against the, that uh, compiled version. And in order to see all the parameters, because this is not usually, you know, this kind of plugins, uh, you know, the, the documentation is not very uh, nice for installation. You can always use CCMake to explore uh, the build configuration things and do that visually instead of going through the CMake files or the documentation. Yeah, I hope you find this uh, video useful and uh, yeah, see you in next videos.